Hi, that ended up landing a little more profoundly than, than I thought it would. The video on Olympic emblems ended up uh, doing numbers more than I expected. And thank you, thank you so much. It's great that I get to share niche interest in particular graphic design with you and that it uh, resonated in, in such a way. So thank you very much. And I have heard your comments and yes, I will do an episode on the mascots. But first, I'm doing this video on the Paralympic emblems. Before I start though, I want to briefly apologize to Australia for misspelling Sydney. I It's not the first time I've made literally that mistake because there is a retirement community very near us named Sydney, spelled the way that I spelled it. And I don't know, it's, it's just, I spelled it like the wrong Sydney, even though it is spelled correctly in the logo that I showed mere moments after saying that Sydney was spelled with an I, so sorry, Australia, I guess. This is meant to be a look at these emblems from a graphic design perspective and my opinion, which you do not have to share. And this isn't necessarily meant to be sort of like a trivia or history lesson, but I had to learn all of this while sorting out these emblems. So now you have to learn about it too, because the history of the Paralympic games is very convoluted. In 1948, a neurologist named Sir Ludwig Gutmann was working at Stoke Mandeville Hospital with World War II veterans who had spinal cord injuries and were in wheelchairs. He wanted to do some sort of just fun competition, and the London Olympics were happening that year with their awful woodblock print emblem, and he decided it would be fun to do like an archery competition. So the Stoke Mandeville Games for the Paralyzed took place for the first time in 1948. There were 16 competitors and the only event was archery. That's the origin of this whole thing because the Stoke Mandeville Games kept happening every single year. Eventually a Dutch team came over to also participate, thereby making it an international games. And then in 1960, they took place in Rome, coinciding with the Rome Olympics, and that has been retroactively considered the first Paralympic Games. The Stoke Mandeville Games are still going. In fact, they've been going every single year. They've went through a couple different name changes, and they're now the International Wheelchair and Amputee Games, but they still happen. But anytime they intercede with a year where the Olympics are happening, then it becomes the Paralympics. They sort of join in together with the Paralympics because you may be surprised to know, as I was, that the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, and the IPC, the International Paralympic Committee, are completely separate entities. They have a contract that keeps getting renewed, and I kind of assume it will always keep getting renewed because it would be a bad look for the IOC to suddenly no longer support the Paralympic Games, and it's all upside for the Paralympic Committee, to the extent that now the Olympics have it in their rules and regulations for host cities, that the IOC says, if you wanna host the Olympics, you have to make sure that all the venues and everything are also gonna be good for the Paralympic Games. You can't have the Olympics without also having the Paralympic Games. So this is great for the IPC, but they're separate entities, which is, I didn't realize that. That does, however, explain a few things, such as the bizarre history of the Paralympic Games in terms of relationship to the Olympics and host cities and stuff, because they've only shared the same host city relatively recently, and branding and their emblems and logos has not been consistent. To that end, before I start going game by game and looking at the individual emblems, I want to talk about the Paralympic logo overall, which currently looks like this. This is the symbol of the Paralympics, or at least it has been since 2003. This is the Paralympics equivalent of the Olympic rings. This appears on the emblems, this appears in the branding, this is the overall brand emblem for the Paralympics. Although actually they have been tweaked even since then because this is how they were introduced in 2003 and this is how they look now following a 2019 sort of branding streamline. The, the colors have been tweaked to pull them more in line with the Olympic rings and just sort of like geometrically, they're not just three sort of haphazard swoops. They're actually coming out from a central circular point. So which I appreciate, I like when logos get to sort of do that kind of, you know, mathematical geometric 
sort of look. The shapes themselves are called agitos, which is Latin for I move. And so these represent the movement of the Paralympic Games. Prior to that was this symbol, which only really makes sense if you know that prior to that was this symbol, which was introduced for the Paralympic Games in Seoul. These shapes are called a pa, they're one half of the teguk that is on the Korean flag. So they're sort of intrinsically tied to the games in Seoul, even though this was used in subsequent Paralympic Games. The IOC eventually asked the IPC to change this because they felt it was too similar to the rings, because it's five shapes in the same sort of layout and the same colors. And the IPC didn't want to, and the IOC said, look, well, we're not going to work with you if you don't change it. So then they did change it to this, which is the three pa in different colors. But then these ended up being the colors that would be used for the agitos going forward. Before that, for the 1984-1988 games, both of which took place in Innsbruck, the Paralympics logo was this, which I don't know much about because frankly, there are just fewer resources online about the inspiration and the design process behind all of the various designs for the Paralympic emblems. Part of it is because they, it has been sort of so haphazard over the years of who has been in charge of the games, but part of it is just that people don't take the Paralympic Games as seriously. So I don't know what design decisions led to this, but I am having difficulty interpreting it at face value as anything other than the Olympics, but broken. And I think I'm not alone in that, and I'm almost positive that that's why they changed it in 1988, because these are it's not good. Prior to that, from the 60s and the 80s, was this, which is better, but it's still just sort of like, it's three interlocking rings, but make them wheelchair wheels. Now, originally, again, the Stoke Mandeville games were only for wheelchair participants, and eventually they opened that up to amputees as well, and as we know now, the Paralympics have people with a breadth of different abilities, but at the time, it was very wheelchair focused. So I guess it made sense. It does feel to me a little like on the nose and I, I don't love it. But then prior to that, the first Paralympic emblem as in like a logo that was overall for the Paralympic games was this, which it's like it's five interlocking rings, but there's an unnecessary border and there's stars in the middle. It's very busy. I don't like this very much at all. 1960 Summer Paralympics, Rome. Again, technically speaking, this was the 13th Stoke Mandeville games. It was only retroactively considered the first Paralympics because it took place in Rome, the same place that was hosting the Paralympics at the time. By the way, the London Paralympics mascot, the London 2012 mascot, is named Mandeville as a callback to the Stoke Mandeville Games, which is the only nice thing I can say about the London 2012 mascots. But more on that next video. This games didn't have its own emblem, actually. This was the Stoke Mandeville logo at the time, which, as you can see, was later sort of retroactively adopted as a Paralympic emblem, but there's actually nothing really to talk about for this game specifically. 1964 Summer Paralympics, Tokyo. If you remember from the first video, Tokyo 64, very, very cool. Let's see what they've got for the Paralympics. Oh, that's a shame. Woof, that is, that is just a busy mess. There's a bird, birds as a motif show up often in Paralympic emblems, it seems, at least twice, maybe more than that. And it's just the, the five rings in the, the font and everything, it's busy. This is di disappointing. Also, this is the last time that the Paralympics will share a host city with the actual Olympic Games until 1988. This is what I'm talking about with how it's difficult to track all of this. If you go to paralympic.org and look at their archives, they don't even count the Rome games, they count Tokyo, and then nothing until 1992. It's, there was so many different federations involved in organizing all of this. If you want to do more research into this to try and sort this all out, I recommend you not. 1968 Summer Paralympics, Tel Aviv. So these were supposed to be hosted in Mexico City, along with the Mexico 68 Olympics, but Mexico was like, uh, actually, I don't think we can. We just don't have the infrastructure, so no. Nah and Tel Aviv offered, and so it was in Tel Aviv. Anyway, here's the emblem. It's 
literally nothing to write home about. It says Tel Aviv 1968, and there's the wheels, and that's, it, it, yeah, you did it. Good job. A lot of people really scrambling to get logos together in these days. 1972, Summer Paralympics, Heidelberg. Reminder, the Summer Olympics were in Munich, so these were released in the same country, but not the same city. And the Paralympics actually ended 15 days before the Olympics, which is atypical for how it works these days. And their emblem was man in wheelchair doing archery, or possibly darchery, which it turns out is a separate sport. It just seems like a very narrow representation of the games, considering that the games available at the 1972 Summer Paralympics were archery, athletics, goal ball as a demonstration sport, lawn bowls, snooker, swimming, table tennis, weightlifting, wheelchair basketball, and wheelchair fencing, and also darchery, which is like archery and darts. Like you, you do, it's bow and arrow, but there's a dart board, so you get points. It sounds awesome, actually. I think they should do that all the time, but I don't, I don't know if it ever made it to any other Olympics. Anyway, as for the emblem, me mediocre. 1976 Winter Paralympics, Ornskoldsvik, or however you pronounce that. This was the first ever Winter Paralympics, or as it was called at the time, the first Winter Olympics for the disabled. The naming conventions for these games have gone through a lot of iterations over the years, because it was the Stoke Mandeville Games initially, and then it was the Stoke Mandeville Games for wheelchair, and then wheelchair and amputees, and then this was the Olympics for the disabled, and then Paralympic Games, and now Paralympics, or Paralympics and now Paralympic Games. So there's a lot of inconsistency with that over the years. The logo, on the other hand, is this. It's, uh, it's two skiers and a crest. Now, I was critical of the Heidelberg one because it only featured wheelchair archery, and there were many other events there. This, the crest, only features alpine skiing and cross-country skiing, but, in their defense, these games only consisted of alpine skiing and cross-country skiing, so, I mean, it gets everything across. Beyond that, I am just begging you to please do some graphic design. 1976 Summer Paralympics, Toronto. No, not like that. Uh, this, this is the Toronto emblem. This took place a little time after the Montreal Games in, in the same year, so at least in the same host country. This was the first time that they were ever shown on TV the Paralympics, so, you know, that's a nice little landmark. The emblem, on the other hand, I'm not entirely sure, I don't know if that person is meant to be in a wheelchair and if that's what the three interlocking rings, we never see these rings again either. This is totally unique and different here. It's not connected in any way to the Montreal design. It's its own thing and it's it's just this, It's that's the entirety of it. And I mean, it's it's clean. I'll give you that, it's clean. It shares the same color with the Montreal games, which again, is just, it's just because it's Canada. It's red because it's Canada, but it's fine. It's fine. Sorry, Toronto. Also, I am a big fan of portmanteaus. I will try to make a portmanteau out of anything, but Toronto Olympiad did not need to happen. 1980 Winter Paralympics, Galo, or as it was known at the time, the second Olympic Winter Games for Disabled. Not the disabled, just for disabled. Here it is on the emblem, which is busy. It's just got a lot going on. They've got the three wheels and they put a torch in front of it. And then there's the name of the city and what I assume is the coat of arms of the city. I would rank this as inoffensive, but not great. 1980 Summer Paralympics, Arnhem. In 1980, the Olympics were in Moscow and the Soviet Union was given the option to host the Paralympic Games but the Soviet Union didn't even compete in the Paralympic Games at the time, claiming that there were no disabled people in the country. Which is a take. Uh, so it went to the Netherlands instead. And here it is! Hey, actual graphic design happening now. Got a big 80, got like some, looks like mountains? Which is weird both for the Summer Games and for the Netherlands, neither of which leap to the forefront of my mind when I think of mountains. So maybe it's just meant to be like a like a ribbon or the the, the flame coming off of the Olympic torch, perhaps. Uh, it's very 1980s uh, and it's fine. 1984 Winter Paralympics, Innsbruck. Not sure why these ones weren't in the same country as the 1984 Winter Olympics, but I guess Innsbruck just has all the facilities and everyone knew that they'd be up for it. 
Here's the emblem. It's got the golden roof, which is a Innsbruck landmark, this particular building, and those rings we talked about. They also have the Olympic rings because these were fully officially sanctioned by the IOC, even though the more formal partnership we're used to seeing now wasn't quite in place. 1984 Summer Paralympics, New York. Same year as Los Angeles. These games were technically in two places, sort of like the Melbourne Stockholm games from 1956 where they had to keep all their horses in Scandinavia. In this case, the wheelchair events were happening at Stoke Mandeville as part of the regular Stoke Mandeville games and everything else was happening in Long Island. Yeah. Here's the emblem. It's simple, but I kind of like it. It's a little haphazardly drawn, but you know, it's a, it's a torch. It says USA on it and and I don't know, maybe that's all it needs. The Paralympic emblems don't get that good for a while. 1988 Winter Olympics, Innsbruck. We're back at Innsbruck again because Calgary couldn't slash didn't want to host the Paralympics that year. So, hey, we know Innsbruck's good for it. Let's fire it back there. What's their emblem this time? The same, but in color. I gotta give it to Innsbruck. They're very economical with how they use their emblems. 1988 Summer Paralympics, Seoul. Finally, the timelines have converged and we have the host city of the Olympics also hosting the Paralympics. Here's the emblem. As I mentioned, it's the PA, the Taeguk design, and the colors of the Olympic rings arranged like the Olympic rings. This is the entirety of the emblem. This is the entire one for the Seoul Games. And the IOC, in retrospect, didn't like it. I think it's fine, you know? It's like Olympics, but in Seoul, but not quite the Olympics. It gets, I don't know, I think this gets the point across. 1992 Winter Paralympics, Tinya and Albertville. They had to spread it out a bit from just Albertville proper. Anyway, it's very 90s, but it's clean, and it's at least trying to do something. I. I have difficulty interpreting this any other way than assuming that the intent was, look, the bird with broken wings yet can fly, which, you know, is like m maybe not quite, it's, it's, it's a little blunt of a message, I think, uh, but it, it looks nice. It's very, it looks very 90s. It's not, you know, mercifully, it's not, you know, like the cover of a piece of software like the Lillehammer one was, but this is, uh, it's nice. 1992 Summer Paralympics, Barcelona. Right away, this is actually one of my favorites so far. I wasn't particularly into just the Barcelona logo. It was not one of my favorites. And in the same way that I didn't like that, I'm not a huge fan of this. But what I like about this is that it is taking the existing Olympics logo of this joyous athlete in the middle of performing and just adding that circle, but having no less of the, the joy in the performance. And it's just like, yes, this athlete is in a wheelchair and that's the difference. That's the only difference. And I like that a lot. I think that is a good message delivered just through visual graphic design. I like that. I, I, I like that intent. I, again, I still don't love the colors and the drop shadow and stuff like that. It's, it's a little too 90s for me, but I like that aspect of it. 1994 Winter Paralympics, Lillehammer. This seems a little haphazard to me. I, th I think part of it is that they're still using the Paralympic emblem from Seoul with the paw, and it, it sort of smacks of Lillehammer going to the IPC and saying, hey, we need like a logo, you know, like the rings that we have on the Olympic one, and the IPC going, uh, I don't know, we got this Korean one kicking around from before. I guess you could put it on, on your banner. Uh, the font is the same, the very sort of like apple looking Garamond font. Uh, it's it's not so aggressively enterprise software as the normal Lillehammer one was, but the normal Lillehammer one also was like very graphic and clean with the Aurora Borealis. Whereas this is an image of someone, it's, it's like a person with a sun and it's meant to, you know, radiate strength and everything, which is cool, but I, it seems ununified to me. 1996 Summer Paralympics, Atlanta. Now you'll recall Atlanta was my favorite American host city logo out of all of the US games. Atlanta like really nailed it. So let's see what they got for the Paralympics. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I mean, it's okay. You've got the star and the torch and sort of what I'm generously assuming is an indication of a wheel. 
but it, it feels just very generic, actually, more than anything else, especially when compared to the main Atlanta one. Oh well. 1988 Winter Paralympics, Nagano. We'll leave it to the Japanese to introduce some whimsy, at least. This is, this is the emblem. You can see that the overall Paralympic emblem is now down to just the three figures with different colors, and those colors have been represented in the Paralympic emblem itself, which is in the shape of Pararabbit, the Paralympic rabbit, which is the, the mascot for the games. Uh, you know what? It's, it, it's fun. It's fun. I dig it. Why not? 2000 Summer Paralympics, Sydney. You know I love you, Australia. All right, the emblem. I want you to take a look at the emblem and see if you can decipher what they think it represents. Because I'll admit I couldn't. It's meant to be a human figure. The red is the head, the green is an arm, the blue is a leg, breaking through this barrier represented by the circle. And when you say that, it's like, oh yeah, okay, yes, I can totally see that. But without having it explained to me, I looked at it and I was like, shapes! Shapes that go, wah! Like maybe it's kind of like kind of fireworkies? It's, it looks celebratory, so that's nice. But I, I, I didn't get the, the person breaking through the barrier. But it's not bad. It just, I didn't necessarily get what they were putting across. 2002 Winter Paralympics, Salt Lake City. Curiously, this one's very similar in intent, and it's using the same three colors for the same three different parts of what is meant to represent an athlete in motion. And, and it's fine. I actually kind of like the Sydney one better, even though I couldn't necessarily have told you what it was meant to be, just because this one seems too obvious and literal. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's on me. 2004 Summer Paralympics, Athens. In a similar style to the Olympic emblem for that year, this puts you in mind of a Grecian urn with the art on the side representing an athlete. This indeed does represent just an athlete. It's not anyone or any sort of mythical figure that's very specific. It's, I honestly kind of like this one too. Again, it's sort of like, yeah, maybe it looks a little busy, but it's taking place in Athens, so, you know, let Athens draw on its millennia history. This does seem now even weirder that they're still using the very Korean designs for the Paralympic overall emblem. In fact, this will be the last games that they do that, but, you know, that combined with the very, very Greek image does now seem even stranger, but overall, this one is okay. 2006 Winter Paralympics, Torino. I didn't talk about this font last time, because boy, is this ever a 2000s era font. This is this is very, very mid-2000s graphic design uh, with this like very like future style kind of font use here. The actual emblem is it's okay, so we're seeing the first use of the current Agitos IPC logo here, and then the actual Torino emblem is like a further stylized version of the main Olympics emblem that they used, but with the Paralympic colors, and yeah, it's all right. It, this probably involved them having to change out branding on the venues less, uh, which I guess is nice for them. 2008 Summer Paralympics, Beijing. Wow, Paralympic emblems love this motif with making a vaguely person shape out of these colors. <laughs> it seems to show up a lot. This is also in the shape of a Chinese character that it can mean a bunch of different things depending on context. I don't know exactly what they intended it to mean in this context, but it is indeed a character and then also stylized to be in the shape of an athlete with red as the head. And this one, blue is the arms and green is the leg. So, you know, really switching it up there. 2010 Winter Paralympics, Vancouver. I'm not actually super biased about the Vancouver Games. Like, maybe a little, but I'll save that for the mascot episode. That said, this emblem's nice. Despite what you might initially think, that's not meant to be yet another athlete with a dot for a head and the, you know, arm and the leg and whatever. This is the view of the mountains and sun from Vancouver. This is what the landscape of Vancouver looks like. 
So I like that as a, you know, at least it's different. And the colors are different too. This is using much more of the Vancouver organizational colors rather than the colors from the IPC logo, which in this case has actually been monochromed as part of the overall emblem, which I dig. This looks much more unified and much more of its own distinct thing, which I appreciate. 2012 Summer Paralympics, London. I had a lot of beef with the London 2012 logo. Generally speaking, folks in the comments agreed with me, particularly those who lived in England at the time. Uh, so let's see what they did for the Paralympic logo for the 2012 games. Oh, they made it worse. Oh, they took what they had done that was bad and made it worse by adding more colors and patterns. Cool idea. London, why? Why? It's so bad. It's, it's literally hard to look at. Apparently these Paralympics were a success on like every metric that counts, but not, not the logo. Not the logo. 2014 Winter Paralympics, Sochi. I mean, this is actually less effort than the regular Sochi logo. It's not even two different colors. They, they don't even have that like, oh, you know, with the Baltic and the Caucasus. No, it's just, it just, again, I like the font. I don't mind the font, but like, oof. 2016 Summer Paralympics, Rio. Dang, I like this one a lot. I was okay on the Rio Olympics one, but I like this one better. It's an infinity symbol. It's like, it's meant to be an infinite thing. Okay, so it's, it's meant to be, a heart and an infinity symbol emphasizing the infinite heart of Paralympic athletes, which is, again, it's a, it, that's, a nice, that's a nice idea, but it also looks good, <laughs> which is important. And yeah, I think this is, this is very strong, honestly. 2018 Winter Paralympics, Pyeongchang. This makes me want to scroll to the bottom of the page and see what the footnote is referencing because it looks like two asterisks. It's a stylized Hangul character that was also in the main Olympic logo. And it's meant to represent, what is it meant to represent? Ice crystals. It's, again, it's something about how thin the stroke width is. It just looks, Looks, it looks last minute. It looks like it was done in a rush. I'm sorry. 2020 Summer Paralympics, Tokyo. Obviously this is directly related to the main Olympics logo. It's got that same pattern on it. It's meant to represent, you know, like a, a refined Japanese elegance. It, this also looks like a hand fan on purpose. It's, you can see at the bottom, you know, where the bamboo would go. It's meant to look like a, you know, like a fan that you would use to cool off, which you would probably need at the Tokyo games. And yeah, it, again, what I like about this is what I like about the 2021, which is that it's immediately Japan without just being their flag, because they did that once and it was great at the time, but we don't need that again. So yeah, good job. So there you have it. There is all the Paralympic emblems from the first Stoke Manville games up to now. And there are some that already exist in the future in the comments for the previous video. Any comments that weren't asking me to do something about mascots or the Paralympic emblems or angry that I misspelled Sydney were mentioning, you know, well, what about the next, you know, the Beijing and there's Paris and, you know, what about the future emblems? I, maybe we'll get to those at some point, but you know what no one asked for? <laughs> the torch relay. Oh, that's right. It's time for a bonus round because since the Atlanta games, the Olympic torch relay has had its own logo. Why? No reason, but they have. So it's time for lightning round torch relay logos. 1996, Atlanta. Again, this is so 90s. I don't know why the Atlanta games desperately needed to have that very dark green, but here you go. It's two silhouettes passing off a torch. Look forward to seeing both of those motifs, torches and the relay uh, showing up in all of these because it's the torch relay. What more do you have to work with? 1988, Nagano. Hey. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very 90s, especially with just like the random geometric shapes flying around. 
it's uh, yeah I mean you got the person you got the torch so I guess that's all you had to do uh, I'm off it 2000 Sydney I kind of like this figure better than the figure in the actual Olympic logo and I like the design of the the fire coming off of the torch that font is a choice and not one that I support. 2002, Salt Lake City. I don't know why, but the fact that the person's body and the mountains and the fire off the torch is so angular and geometric, it bugs me that the head is so round. I think the whole thing should have been angular and geometric. Otherwise, I don't mind this. The colors are nice. I feel medium about this one. 2004, Athens. Hey, the torch relay is allowed to have sponsors. So that's interesting. This is a real break from the other Athens branding, but you know what? I dig it. It's also because normally the torch leaves Athens and then goes to the host city, but since Athens was the host city, they actually did a world tour, which was very popular at the time. So the fact that the runner is running around a globe is a good thing to get across in this particular logo. So yeah, all right. 2006, Torino. I don't mind the colors and the shapes on this one. The use of black is an interesting choice. More so, I don't know why it's in this kind of arched shape. It looks like the torchbearer is running past a window to the Coca-Cola Samsung store, or these are the tombstones for both the torch relay and Coca-Cola and Samsung. So I don't, I, yeah. this has a lot to like, but a couple things that sort of put me off. 2008, Beijing. Ooh, that bangs. The, the two little figures passing off the torch and the enormous flame. This is, ooh, yeah, mmm. Oh, I like this one a lot. I just really like the stylized flame on this one. It's very good. 2010, Vancouver. Oh, this is actually really sweet though. Cause the white, the torches were all white. I remember them, they looked sort of that shape. The, the, it, it looks like the torch with the fire coming off of it, but it also looks like, I don't know, like the Capilano suspension bridge or it looks like, it, this looks like Vancouver terrain, right? The green and some blues and stuff. I, this is this one's very good. 2012, London. Come on, man, why do you keep doing this to me and everyone else? London, why? God, no, you keep making it worse. 2014, Sochi. Hey, Russia found their graphic designer. That looks very pretty. I like that a lot. This is like very stylized Russian flame. Oh, that is, that's super cool. Good job. 2016, Rio. Ooh, I like those colors. Looks like a Ted Harrison painting. I don't know if any, maybe that's just something only Canadians care about. I don't know, I dig that a lot. That is a, that is, that's clean. 2018, Pyeongchang. I'm beginning to think that the torch relay logos are just on balance better than most Olympic logos or Paralympic logos, probably because they're designed by fewer people and they're not nitpicked by a committee. This is great. <laughs> this is really cool. I like this a lot. I'm all in for stylized fire. 2020 Tokyo. Ooh, again, look at that. This actually puts me in mind of the Tokyo 64 logo with the red and gold. This is very good. This is very, very good stuff. Good job, Tokyo. You had to wait for an extra year, but you got there on branding. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. Do check out other stuff on our other channels, Loading Ready Run. We do comedy and light entertainment stuff over there. We do stuff with Magic the Gathering. Uh, this channel is just for me to say what things that I enjoy doing, such as critiquing the graphic design of Olympic emblems. Uh, I have said I'll do mascots, no promises when, but I will I will do one on the mascots. But if you have any other ideas of things that you'd like me to take a look at uh, from like a graphic design breakdown perspective, let me know. I'd, I'd be curious to, to expand my visual horizons. Uh, in the meantime, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Later.